CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, harbinger of your hour of mystery, suspense, and the macabre. What do we think of when we think of the future? Actually, we think of our own future. And uh, we think of it as tomorrow or next month. Perhaps a few years from now. Some of us can even envision the next decade. But this is as far as we can go for all practical, self-centered purposes. In a vague and even regretful way... We are aware that the world will go on after we're gone. And it will. It will. And what kind of world will it be? Hundreds, thousands, millions of years from now. My name is Rado. I'm an admiral of the fleet. You're not aware of me, but I can make the decision that will end your life. And the life of every living thing in the solar system. I have the power of decision. When we patrol space and I hear my observers say... Unknown ship. Range. 34 million miles. Clear for action. Clear for action. Aimer ready. Ready. Firing switch on. Firing switch on. Right now is when I decide. Do I or do I not press the button that will destroy the world? It's my decision. Mine. And mine alone. Our mystery drama, Who Made Me, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The name of the planet is Three. In our day, we called it Earth. But so much has happened since we lived here. So much time has gone by. They call the planet Three because it's the third planet from the sun. That much, at least, has remained the same. It's a world of people. And the people seem to be divided into three classes. First, the group Ones. A kind of aristocracy that rules the planet. Secondly, the group twos, who perform the incredibly complex, skilled labor. And third, the, well, those who can't seem to make it. They're all group three. As long as they behave themselves, nobody bothers them. This is the story of a group one aristocrat named Rado, a very important man. Also a very troubled man. Troubled because he's talking to a boy of, uh, 18, 19, and the boy is asking questions. Who made me, Rado? Again? I thought we settled that last time, Corral. No, we didn't settle anything. Who made you? Corral, you know who made you. Leela and I, we made you. I know about you and Leela. What I'm trying to find out is who made all of us. Who made all of us? Why? Because it bothers me. Well, now, when something bothers you, you must report to repair. Leela took me to repair yesterday. You saw Leela yesterday? Mm Mm-hmm. It was her duty visit, and she took me to repair. And what did repair say? I'm in perfect balance. Well, then how can anything possibly bother you? Well, uh, you see... Yes? Well, maybe... Maybe I'm just... One of those. No, no, Corral. You are not one of those, and you must never say that, even in a joke. Truthfully, the only reason I hope I'm not is for your sake and Leela's. For our sakes? Well, wouldn't you and Leela lose your franchise if you couldn't reproduce your own birth group? Reproduce is inaccurate and archaic. Say make. Well, don't you and Leela like being franchised? Leela and I can only like what is legal and balanced. 
Now, you stop wasting time with group three type questions like who made me and concentrate on your studies. Lord knows you have enough to keep you busy. Uh, who's Lord? Lord? Well, every now and then people say, Lord knows. Oh. Well, obviously, there was once a sage named Lord who knew everything. Hmm. Well, that's what I thought. But I can't find her in any history book. Well, that would indicate she was in prehistory. And that means I'll never find out. And that's Corral. So far, he's the only one Leela and I made during our franchise partnership. I must admit that my attitude toward him has never been balanced. Legally, all we owe the ones we make is basic training. Yet, I have made, today included, countless free visits. A free visit is not exactly illegal, but it is unusual. Balanced people do not perform unusual actions. And, of course, the chief of repair, the commanding officer of repair's fantastic complex of diagnostics, treatment, and therapy happens to be my own franchise partner, the lady Leela. But I know, I know I am nurturing a secret imbalance because each visit with Corral gives me a feeling of exhilaration. It's wrong, this fear I have for his future, this pride I have in him, this hope I cherish for him. It's wrong. Now, Corral, remember, obey your supervisor. Yes, Rado. Keep your eye on the ball. Uh, what does it mean, keep your eye on the ball? Well, it's quite possible the ancients may have inscribed the rules of conduct on a device shaped like a ball. Oh. And therefore, people would do well to keep looking at it. You know, you do ask a lot of questions, and after all, I am not a woman. Well, even though you're not a woman, people say you know just about everything, Rado. You made a free visit to Corral today. I see, Leela, after all these years, one of your inspectors found a way to let you know. She may think so. But I intend to ruin her career for it. Now what, my lady? Do you suggest I report for repair? Will you assure me that any group one can ask for it without prejudice? I suggest you go inside and tell Turn we shall dine shortly. Certainly. Turn had punched out the food request. Characteristically, she had asked the wrong menu. But I said nothing. You know how they are. The tiniest criticism and they collapse into a severe depression or explode into a manic tantrum. When Turn saw me, she smiled. A typical group three smile. You know those people. They seem to smile with their entire body. I can release dinner any time, Admiral. The lady will tell you. Say the word. Speak one little word, or point your finger, or blink your eye. I said the lady will tell you. May I leave the villa tonight and visit my partner? You sir? must ask the lady. If the lady says no, I will kill myself. You are free to leave now, Turn. We shall release dinner ourselves. Oh, thank you, lady. Darling lady, sweetest lady ever made. Why did you allow her to leave so early? You and I have to talk. Well, whatever we say would be beyond her. Yes. If she's group three. Turn? How could Turn be an inspector? I suspect Turn. Because she's too perfect. Too absolutely group three. Well, suppose she is an inspector. What have you and I ever said to each other that's reportable? I am head of repair. You are admiral of the fleet. And we are about to be disenfranchised. Why? Corral cannot qualify for group one. He will fail the examination. But you took him to repair yourself. He was judged in perfect balance. Oh, yes. Because he was examined by a single practitioner, and I was present. Do you think she's out of balance? Oh, I know it. He's one of those. I refuse to believe that. You refuse to accept it. Yesterday he asked me, do you love me, Leela? Love? I see. Love. Well, the best I could get out of him is that love is an intense form of like. Well, couldn't you explain that any emotional intensity is a form of imbalance? Well, love is an intense like. It can only be bestowed on one person. It restricts and excludes. And what type of group three questions has he been asking of you? I was afraid to tell her. And yet... And yet see how calm she is. It's because she's a woman. We men, we take things so much harder than they do. When Corral is classified down to group three, he'll disappear from her life forever. But I know this. He will never be gone from mine. 
You'll never be cold or sick or hungry, and they shall not die young. Secretly, somehow, I'll arrange to protect them. He's my corral. What are you thinking about, Rado? I'm becoming reconciled to the fact that Corral will not be admitted to Group 1. Who said he will not be admitted? You did. Well, I said he couldn't qualify. Well, isn't that the same thing? No. Because, qualified or not, he will pass the examination. He will? How? You and I will prepare him for it. Leela, that's illegal. Of course. I shall pay my duty visit the day before the exam. I will inject him for stability in physical function. Well, if that's discovered, we'll be degraded. I know. I wrote that law myself. But why, Leela? Why? Because I don't want to be disenfranchised. Leela, you're talking like a man. Oh, shut up. My lady, you're obviously out of balance. So report me to an inspector. Oh, let me take you to repair. No. Please. Please. Please what? Find a way to, to keep us franchised. Please. But how can I? I want to stay franchised. I find it pleasurable to be franchised with you. I never expected pleasure. I never even knew it existed. I... I submitted to the order. I mean, I... I accepted. I... I complied with the directive of the franchise committee. After they balanced us together, I agreed. I obeyed the law. And the pleasure came later. Oh, I want us to stay franchised, Rado. Don't you? I want us to stay balanced, Leela. Having our franchise is what keeps me balanced overall. Do you understand? I understand you're unbalanced. So are you. So are you. All right. You realize all imbalance must be reported. Yes. And I'll report mine if you'll report yours. It'll take time, but eventually I can be balanced out of my need for this franchise. Are you willing to be balanced out of your need for Corral? You see, I know about that. What's to be done? Yes, we could probably cheat him past the classification board somehow, but then what? If he's really Group 3... Those characteristics will become noticeable eventually. He'll be officially declassified, and our franchise will be dissolved in any event. You won't let that happen, Roger. How can I prevent that? You'll convince him he's Group One. There's no way I can convince him. No way I can make him believe he's Group One if he really... Find a way. Lila, you don't understand. In his heart, he wants to be Group Three. Find a way to preserve our franchise. Assume the worst. He'll be declassified and will be disenfranchised. Even if our partnership is dissolved, we can still give each other pleasure unofficial. No. I am not a group two machine or a group three animal. My pleasure needs this franchise. If I lose this franchise, I will undergo permanent imbalance. I will confess. I will proclaim our treason. Oh, I will be degraded. But I will drag you down with me. Down all the way to group three. Do you believe me? Yes, I believe you. No one cares who partners whom among those in Group 3. And I have decided. We will be partners till death do us part. You will never escape me. Be reasonable, Leela. I could live in Group 3, but you would die. Now, place your arms around me. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, now. Now I feel I'm in perfect balance. And you will save Corral. Leela. Leela, the truth is, he doesn't want to be saved. Save him, dearest. Save him. Save him. Or I will kill you. You must remember we're telling you a story that takes place in the distant future. But in many respects... Much of what you've learned so far could very well have taken place in our own time. As we evolve, it's only the outward trappings that change. People remain the same, basically. Or do they? Well, there'll be some differences when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. The history 
of the world is many things. But one thing that always remains constant is the relationship between men and women. We don't mean the relationship is constant. We mean there is a relationship. Because men and women must live together somehow. And raise the children somehow. And doesn't the success of any society depend on how well they do it? Leela, you're not listening to me. I said Corral wants to be in Group 3. No one in his right mind wants to be in Group 3. We have created one who is one of those. Balance. Oh, Lord, whoever you were, tell me how I can achieve balance. I need balance. Every time I take the ship up there with my 22 technicians, I'm the one who needs balance. Without Corral, how can I hope for balance? The next time, the next time I hear my observer technician warn. Unknown ship. Range. 32 million miles. Clear for action. Clear for action. This is how it is on patrol. The unknown ship circles in the viewing field. Is she hostile? Is she curious? Would she just as soon not have spotted us either? Is she stronger than we are? Weaker? This is where I must maintain balance. How easy it would be to signal my aimer and fill the universe with death and destruction. How often have admirals before me done this? Unbalanced admirals. What a price the universe has paid for that. And how many times? No, balance. Balance. And I am balanced. My vanity, my ego, my pride is not in need of constant nourishment. I do not require all life from the universe to bow down before me. Perhaps the admiral in command of the unknown ship does. I watch the screen. I'm headed for him. He is headed for me. Very well, Admiral. I am not willing. My vanity does not require me to destroy the world. You may claim the victory. And I give the order. Awaiting orders. Execute. 180 degree turn. Acknowledge. 180. Head for home. Heading home. And once again... I have saved the world. Because I am balanced, I have saved the world. I must never, never lose this balance. But without Corral and without Laura. Laura. How I need you now, right now. Are you tired, dearest? She kills me, Laura. You don't have to talk about her, Rado. They train you and destroy you, these group one women. Laura, tell me you love me. Tell me you love me. I love you, Rado. I love you. Listen to me. I'm fantastically unbalanced. But I don't report to repair. I come here. I come here to this group three woman. To this illiterate but beautiful, soft and lovely woman. I have the power to destroy the universe, but I am helpless in her hands. I come to her... So that she can save me, save me from myself. Don't kiss me now, Rado. Why not? I love you. You don't want to kiss me. Not now. Not while there's something inside you that's angry, that's frightened. I can feel it. What is it, Rado? Yes. Yes, I am frightened. You. Afraid? Ah, oh, no. Not my Rado. Corral. I'm frightened for Corral. Why? Corral will be declassified. Oh, no, not Corral. Yes, it's true. Rado, no group one boy is ever declassified. Oh, but he asks questions. Your kind of questions. Group three type questions. Oh, don't they all? Didn't you? Why? Well, I, I don't remember. You don't want to remember. How do you know? Oh, sometimes you talk in your sleep and you ask questions. What, what kind of questions? It's one question. And you've been asking it for years and years. What question? Who made me? Who made me? Of course. That's a normal and natural question. And suddenly 20 years fall away. And I see myself talking to my own group one senior. And I hear myself ask that same question. I remember how important it was for me to find the answer. 
how I must know that answer at all costs. And I remember how wise and how patient my own senior was. And how he handled the situation. And that's how I must handle Corral. Corral, you haven't asked me the usual question. No. I decided not to ask anymore. Why? It seems to displease you. Oh. And here I thought you hadn't asked because you had found the answer. (laughs) The answer? No, not yet. No. Corral. Your classification comes up soon. Will you discuss the question with your examiners? Absolutely. You realize two things will happen. First, you won't get an answer. Second, you'll be assigned to group three. I know. You have no objection to being in group three? I prefer it. I'm not impressed by group one. I'm bored by group two. The only ones who really live are group threes. Live? Oh, they don't have the food and the clothes and the houses... But they're the only ones who laugh and sing. Yes, yes, they do make a certain amount of noise. But you won't find your answer in group three. You're group one. You can't give me the answer either. Yes, but I can help you find it. Can you? Try me. Ask the question. Who made me? Nobody. Well, then how did everything begin? It always was. No, that's not possible. At one time, there must have been nothing. And, and somebody... Somebody deliberately said, today I will create something. And she did. And she created something that became you and me and and every living creature. And she created a place where we could live. Food we could eat. Metals we could shape. Fiber we could wear. And all I want to know, all I want to know is, who is that somebody? Corral, I don't think the answer lies on this planet or any planet in our solar system. I patrol all of them. I meet men and women in all groups of life. I never heard anyone discuss it. Where is the answer? There are other solar systems, other galaxies. Perhaps on one of them, on a planet we never heard of, you'll find your answer. How could I ever get there? If I had your problem, Corral, I'd seek to solve it in a balanced way. I would register... For naval training. Oh, Rado, who wants to join the fleet? I would qualify you as a reconnaissance scout. Rado, I don't mean this personally, but I don't need a uniform and gold braid to bolster my ego. As a scout in your one-man cruiser, you would have to explore every sector of space. And while on scout, you'd be on search. A lone scout might find the answer. Could you really qualify me to become such a scout? Well, only group ones are eligible for officer status. That's unfair. Unfair is a group three word. Is it fair for group one to monopolize? No, but it's right. The basic difference between the groups. Group threes are concerned with what's fair. Group ones are concerned with what's right. A machine is always right, too. It always makes the right decision, performs the right action, gives the right answer. No. No, not always. After a while, there's a bit of wear of malfunction. So it's taken to repair, to be corrected, adjusted, and and balanced. How do you differ from machines, you righteous members of Group 1? Ah, another typical Group 3 tactic, Corral. Always create an involved argument on another subject. The mechanistic personality of Group 1 is very much the subject of this discussion. Since when? I thought the subject was how to find a certain answer to a certain question. Interested? Yes, Rado. Bear it in mind. And you'll breeze through your exams. And don't ask embarrassing or unbalanced questions. But suppose that's how I feel. You must hide that fact from your examiners. But that defeats the purpose of the examination. Whose purpose? Suppose you ask an examiner an unbalanced question. He can't answer it. He'll try to repair it out of you. If he succeeds, you'll be balanced to his satisfaction. But you still won't have the answer. Suppose you say nothing. You show no outward imbalance. You will then have freedom of action to learn the answer in your own way, in your own time. You're... Well, you're saying the end justifies the means. That's how we must live. If you don't have the means you like, you must learn to like the means you have. Rado, how else? Where else can you find the answer? Maybe. Maybe you're right. Keep your eye on the ball. I wish I knew what it said on that ball. Probably what I just told you. Just think, Corral. You'll be free, free to find the answer. Do you agree? Yes. I agree. I have saved him. 
I have saved them in spite of himself. Just as I was saved in spite of myself so many years ago. And I have saved the world. Because now I can remain in perfect balance. And the next time observer technician calls out... Unknown ship. Range. 42 million miles. Clear for action. Clear for action. What is she doing? Holding steady. Stand by to change course. Complete turn. 180 degrees. 180 turn. I'm balanced. I'm balanced. I'm in perfect balance. With Leela, Laura, and Corral. And this balance must always remain exactly the way it is now. And I beg, I implore, whoever, whatever made me, keep me in this balance. Don't let me destroy the world. Well, you can see what's involved. We are dealing with human beings. And human beings are made of highly volatile and combustible materials. And balance, whatever it may mean in that far-off future time, seems to be a precarious state at best. Especially since it seems to hang on the whim of a 19-year-old boy. Well, the immediate future will bring you the third act when I return in just a few moments. time to time we speculate about the future. Will it be paradise? Will it be utopia? Some say yes. Some say no. Some say, why should we expect people to be smarter or better than our ancestors? Oh, we have more knowledge. But do we have more wisdom? Rado, you saw Corral today. Yes, Leela. And what did you say to him? Corral will pass his exam. Oh, are you sure? What did you do? Nothing. I simply remembered what it was like to be a boy. To be filled with fears by the size of the world around me. The confusion of sights and sounds. Permissions. Prohibitions. To look at the stars and wonder... Where does it begin? And where does it end? Who made it? And I remember how I asked my own senior. Did he give you the answer? No. No. But he gave me the courage to go out and look for it. Mm. And did you, Rado? Oh, yes. Did you find it? No. Perhaps it doesn't exist. I looked for it a long time. Then one day, I stopped. Why? The answer didn't seem important anymore. Or maybe the question no longer bothered me. I forgot it even existed until... Until Corral brought it up. Well... It will bother him the way it bothered me. And then one day, he will forget it. Just just as I have forgotten it. Actually, I never forgot it. It just really doesn't seem all that vital anymore. And so, as the time for his exam approached, I could see that Corral had made his decision. He wasn't happy, but he was making the best of it. It's more important to be balanced. Yes, Corral. The world must be run, and the world must be saved by... by balanced people. The people of Group One. Yes, say say the rest of it, Corral. Our system requires balance. It ordains who is Group One, who is Group Two, who is Group Three. This is our holy mission. Yes, Corral. You are ready for your exam. Rano? Uh Uh-huh. What does holy mean? It means, uh... Complete and entire. It comes from the word whole. Ah. But why is it spelled without the W? Oh, some lazy Group 3 printer must have left it off by mistake and custom. I can't wait to qualify for reconnaissance scouts and leave. I can't wait. It was me all over again 20 years later. I have succeeded. I have saved him for Group 1 because he thinks as I did. It's the only way to find the answer. Of course, later on, he'll realize the answer exists here at home. He'll find a group three woman like Laura, and she'll explain it to him the way Laura explained it to me. And like me, he won't be able to accept it. 
I remember when I learned the answer. Laura, do you ever ask yourself, who made me? <laughs> I know. I don't mean your senior partners. No, nor do I. I mean, I know who made all of us. You do? Yes. Love. Love. There is a spirit. It's called love. And it has created this beautiful world we live in. Well, how do you know? Have you have you ever seen the spirit? Well, of course. You see it in the trees, in the flowers, in laughter, and in, in everything that's good. C can you prove it? You don't have to prove it. You just feel it. You just know it. You just recognize it. Oh, Laura, Laura, you're so good for me. This nonsense that you prattle, it's so refreshing. But it isn't nonsense. Oh, now, Laura... I love you. And because I love you, I'm alive. You see, love has made me. Love is everything. Yes, of course. Well, one day, perhaps, you'll believe it. And on that day, I will be so unbalanced... Repair will have me reclassified out of group one. <laughs> Love. It's true. True or not, only a member of group three can afford to believe it. Message for the Admiral. Yes? From the Commander-in-Chief. Report immediately. Acknowledge? Tell her I acknowledge. Navigator, head for home. The oldest, the wisest, the most powerful member of Group One. And when she calls you in, it's for no trivial reason. It usually means war or revolution or something that could determine the very life of the people. I had never been summoned before. What could this mean? Be seated, Admiral. Yes, my lady. Do you know why I sent for you? No, my lady. I have here a directive. It is to be read to all Group 1 officers of the fleet. Uh, effective immediately. No Group 1 commissioned officer is to associate with or visit any female member of Group 3. Signed, the Commander-in-Chief. Do you know the problem? No, my lady. Well, you should. You're part of it. In 18 years... How many offers have you made in your franchise? Well... You have made only one. Daily, our numbers dwindle. The group threes multiply like animals. Now, isn't that true? Yes, my lady. Now, you understand part of the reason for this directive. The other part is even more important, more sinister. The group threes are planning a revolution. A revolution? I can't believe that. You can't? Why not? Are we outnumbered heavily by Group 3? Of course. Since they form the majority, shouldn't it logically occur to them that they should rule the society? But, my lady... And isn't it a part of their strategy to seduce and debilitate the males of Group 1? And aren't they actually doing it? Do you agree? Yes, my lady, I agree. I thought so. That's the only balanced answer. No one in your command is to associate with Group 3 women. Understood? Yes, Intelligence has prepared a list of all known women in Group 3 who are visited regularly by Group 1 officers. Here, here's your copy. Thank you, my lady. They are all to be rounded up by fleet police and placed in special detention camps. For how long? For the rest of their lives. Oh, but It my will lady. discourage other women of that group from associating with Group 1 males. Yes, my lady. Well, is anything wrong, Admiral Rotto? No, ma'am. Perform your mission. You are dismissed. list in her presence. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't wait to get to the bridge of my own ship where I could be alone and undisturbed. And I opened the envelope and took out the list and my eyes shut down to the L's. And there she was. Laura. What was I going to do? And then the voice of my tech. Message to the Admiral. Acknowledge. Have passed examination. M Group 1. Leave immediately as a recon scout. We'll return when I find the answer. Keep your eye on the ball. Signed, Corral. Acknowledge. Corral is gone from me. 
And they'll take Laura away, too. No, I won't let them. I can't let them. I can't give up Laura. I can hide you, Laura. No, Rado, no. Why not? I couldn't live that way. But you'll die in that camp. I'll die anyway. I need people, music, happiness. I need life. Laura, Laura, listen. This is just a temporary scare. I believe it. What do you believe? I believe there'll be a revolt. Group three will revolt? Group three will try to overthrow the government how? With what? Just by being, just by existing. For your own good, Rado. I will leave you. For my good? You're living a lie. And I'm helping. Laura, I can't give you up. You don't have to. But the law says... The law says... No Group 1 commissioned officer is to associate with women of Group 3. You are commanded to round up the women of Group 3. I know, I know all this. Rado, become a member of Group 3 yourself. Then there's no problem, no violation of the law. There's your answer, Rado. You... You can't do it. I love you, Laura. But not enough. Laura, please. Ah. Uh, Poor Rada. Don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me. You sent for me, Commander-in-Chief? Yes, Admiral. I have sent for you to give you a commendation. Read it. To Admiral of the Fleet, Rado. Well done. You have accomplished your mission in less than one month. Group three women are no longer the menace to an orderly, balanced society. Thank you, my lady. Hmm. I shall overlook one tiny matter of imbalance. Madam? Yes, Rado. After all, I couldn't very well expect you to arrest your own Group 3 woman. My own? I couldn't expect any officer to arrest his own woman. And I know for a fact that every one of you took his own woman off the list. But, my lady... You see, Rado, this proves I'm right. It's how an association with a Group 3 woman can undermine a man. My lady, a I... A special squad corrected all these missions. Your woman was arrested this morning. Later, she killed herself. Yes, my lady. Now, you are in balance. Go back to your duty. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, what is it? Unknown ship. Unknown ship. Oh, oh. Uh, range. 32 million miles. Await orders. Await orders, sir. I should stand up to them. But I must back down. I must back down for the commander in chief. I must back down for Leela. And now look at this strange ship in the viewing field. Does her admiral think I'm going to back down for him, too? I'll blow this whole universe apart. I'll show everybody. Look at him coming at me. Range, 29 million. 29 million. Full speed ahead. Full? Ahead? Aimer, ready. Aimer, ready. I won't back down for you, my friend. Firing switch on. Fi firing switch on. Range. Twenty-four million. I'll show everybody. I'll teach them to take Laura away from me. Laura, I will... No. No, 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 Laura, not for you. Not for what I learned from you. Love. Love made me. And not for Corral, not for my son. Yes, I know that word. It's the same word as the sun in the sky. That's what the one you make becomes, the sun in your sky. No, even though you're both gone, you will keep me balanced, balanced. Range, 22 million. Firing switch on. Firing switch off. Firing switch off. Navigator, prepare a 180-degree turn. We're headed home. Acknowledge. What's the unknown ship doing? She is turning. I almost did it this time. I 
almost did it. Oh, love. Love. Laura's love. That made all of us. Help me. Help me always. Please. Please, don't let me destroy the world. More and more, we develop machines that can annihilate the universe. And more and more, the decision to destroy or not to destroy rests in fewer and fewer hands. And these are human hands, impelled by human strengths and human weaknesses. And that's about where and how it is and will always be. I'll be back in a few moments. How many times has the world been destroyed? Are we the first civilization of our kind? How many have there been before us? Can anyone say... But the world will always be destroyed until we can all give Coral's question, who made me, Laura's answer, love. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Marion Seldes, Don Scardino, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. He ordered her to. No one refuses him. And besides, look at her. She does not seem unwilling. Her eyes are looking straight into his. There's a smile on her face. No one resists the salt master's son. See how closely he holds her. Stop them, Brother Ambrosius. Stop them. He shall not have her. I shall see her pretty face mocked with blood before he takes her. Musicians, stop playing. Stop the playing in the name of God. Stop. Benedicta. Where is everyone? Where have they gone? Why is it so silent? Why am I so alone? Amula. Amula, where are you? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by all state insurance companies. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>